Thank you, Pastor Mark. I met Pastor Mark how many years ago? 20 years ago. Uh, all I can say is the crime rate in the Philippines dropped when he met Jesus. <laughs> Thank God for saving people like him. No, no, no. God does save the best and even the worst, doesn't he? Genesis chapter 22, as uh, we uh, have a short time here uh, this afternoon, uh, Genesis chapter 22, uh, talking about knowing God as we face different tests in life. 22, starting with verse 1, then we'll jump to verse 9 after that. After these things, God tested Abraham and said to him, Abraham, and he said, here I am. He said, take your son, your only son Isaac, whom you love and go to the land of Moriah and offer him there a burnt offering on one of the mountains which I, I shall tell you. Verse 9, when they came to the place of which God had told him, Abraham built the altar and there laid wood in order and bound Isaac his son and laid him on the altar on the top of the wood. Then God reached out his hand and took his knife to slaughter his son. But the angel of the Lord got... Lord called to him from heaven and said, Abraham, Abraham. And he said, here I am. He said, do not lay your hand on the boy or anything to him. For now I know you, that, you, that you fear God, seeing you have not withheld your son, your only son from me. And Abraham lifted up his eyes and looked and behold, behind him was a ram caught in a thicket by his thorns, uh, by his horns. And Abraham went and took took the ram and offered it up as a burnt offering instead of his son. Abraham called the name of that place, the Lord will provide, as it is said to this day, on the mount of the Lord, it shall be provided. Word of God is an amazing book. It gives us a lot of wisdom. It's, a, it's, it's something that we can read and get life from. It's something that we uh, uh, hear, God, hear from God from. The Bible is really an amazing book, but so many times, simply because of the convenience or the ease of getting the scripture into our hands, especially in our nation like us, we forget or we fail to consider that the writers or the characters that the scripture talks about did not just copy this from dictation or did not just write things that as they prayed and God revealed things to them. That many of these characters that we see here wrote about God from their own encounters and their tests with God. And as they went through their walk with God, as they went through their tests with God, their encounter with God was so powerful, it actually changed them and it actually still changes us today. See, tests are not graveyards, they're, they're launching pads. So many times in our world, we try to avoid tests and trials, but when you read scripture, you find out that tests from God are defining moments. Tests from God is a, is a time for promotion. It's not a time to get destroyed. It's a time to see God move in our lives and to see a miracle in our lives. Let me ask you this question. How many of you want to see a miracle? You know one major requirement for a miracle? Crisis. Now let me ask you again. How many of you want to see a miracle? As we look into the life of Abraham, here is a man who has been longing to have a son. At 75 years old, God shows up in his life and God says, I'm going to give you a son. From 75 years old, he had to wait for 25 years. Every year, the miracle or the promise is getting more and more impossible. Not getting easier. And signs are not showing it's about to happen. Signs are showing it's never going to happen. For 25 years, he's waiting, and finally he gets his son at 25 years old, at, at, at 100 years old. <clears throat> he rejoices with God. He and his wife see their son grow up and see their son uh, 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 mature and see their son walk the call of God and the purpose of God in their lives. Then at about 30 plus plus years old, God calls Abraham to offer his son. Now you can imagine, try to imagine what's going on in the mind and the heart of Abraham. 
his promised son is now being asked by God to be offered. The amazing part of the story is he obeys. So he goes and he goes on a journey. It takes about three days for him to go from his place to the place where God tells him to offer his son. And in that, in that three days, you see a glimpse of the heart of Abraham and his struggles. He tells, he, he, the Hebrews says that he argues that God can raise his son back from the dead. So I can imagine Abraham walking, thinking, Lord, ikaw ba to? Lord, is this really you? But if it's you, then I know you can raise him from the dead. You see his steps of faith where his son asked him, Father, I see everything, but where's the offering? And he says to his son, the Lord shall provide. Can you imagine the, the faith and the doubt that's mixing in his heart as he's answering? His faith declaration when he tells his servants, you wait here because I and the boy will go and we will come back. Now, could you imagine the mixture of what's happening in his heart and his mind? The faith, the promises, and it doesn't make sense when it comes to the will of God. Now, how many of us go through life many times where we have a word from God and we know what the word of God says and there's faith in our hearts, but sometimes the will and the present circumstances don't add up and it don't make sense. Yet Abraham goes on with it and he goes through with it. Can you imagine? He's, he's just like us. He's not Superman. He's just a man who encountered God and decided to keep walking with God. And in this story, we see a few things that God, that truths that can help us as we face our own tests with God. And the first thing I'd like to share with us is God goes through the test with you. In our world, a test is a, is, is, is a time to prove yourself. With God, a test is just more time to walk with Him. In the world, a test is to show the world how good you are. With God, a test is a time to show how good you are together. God goes through the test with you you are never alone you are never abandoned and many times it was said here earlier when we go through tests we ask God where are you God is there because you never go through a test apart from God because God goes with you the major result that day as Abraham, off, uh, as Abraham comes in there and God says, as he's about to, 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 to get the knife, the interesting thing, there's no record, uh, record of, of a fight. This is a 35 plus 36 year old man. And a 100 plus year old man. Could you imagine? All right, dad. Okay, I agree. Time me. No record of a fight. No record of arguments. And when the time comes that he's about to get the knife and, and put it through his son, heaven opens and the Lord says, stop. And what was, it, what was it? That day, this happened. God spoke from heaven. Do not lay your hand on the boy or anything to him, for I know now that you fear God, seeing you have not withheld your only son from me. You know what? If Abraham offered Ishmael, the world would have marveled at his faith. But the Lord was not asking for Ishmael. The Lord was asking for Isaac. Sometimes in our own tests, we look for easier way out, an easier way out. Not that it's easier, but it's not as valuable. That day, Abraham and went, took the ram and offered it as a burnt offering instead of his son. So Abraham called that name, name of that place, the Lord will provide. As it is said to this day, on the mountain of the Lord, it shall be provided. That day, 
the world found out that the simple man Abraham, God was number one. That day, Abraham found out that God is the ultimate provider. The name Jehovah Jireh was first declared in this encounter with God. The, power, the encounter was so powerful that today the church still stands on that name. That today that name is still a name we use and is still a name we call to and a name that we embrace and we, a name that we hope and we pray that God establishes in our life. That encounter was so powerful, it still marks us today. You never go through a test alone. God goes through with you. Now thinking about that, see what this scripture now means. Isaiah 41 says this, Fear not, for I am with you. Be not dismayed, for I am your God. I will strengthen you. I will help you. I will uphold you with my righteous right hand. Think about this scripture now from that context. Matthew 28. Behold, I am with you always to the very end of the age. And think about this scripture as well. Romans chapter 8, verse 38. For I am sure that neither death, nor life, nor angels, nor rulers, nor things present, nor things to come, nor powers, nor height, nor depth, nor anything else in creation will be able to separate us from the love of Jesus Christ, our Lord. You are never alone. Second truth, tests, trials, and even our mistakes do not change the promises of God or the word of God. They cannot stop the word of God. In our world, the present circumstance is a major concern. Why? Because the present circumstance dictate where you can go in the future. With God, it makes no difference because the circumstance do not decide what happens in the future. It is the word of God that stands forever. It doesn't matter what happens to you today. It doesn't matter what's happening in the world today. The word of God stands forever. You can imagine Abraham. We look at Abraham sometimes and we look at him as superhuman. But Abraham was an ordinary man like us with fears, with struggles, and with mistakes. He lied about his wife twice, telling the, the ruler that she's my sister, afraid. That he will be killed because of how beautiful his wife is. Twice. How many wives feel secure if your husband is like that? How many of you wives will just smile at your husband? Yeah, I'm a sister. Not only that, he fails to wait for God. He could no longer go, uh, wait for God. So he succumbs to his wife's temptation and he takes matters into his own hands. But the great news is his mistakes, his fears, his struggles did not change the promise of God. Did not change the promise of God. In our world, the outcome of the test is crucial. In God, the outcome of the test does not change his plan. It doesn't change his will and it doesn't change his word. The word of God does not need the cooperation and favor of the world. So many times when we pray and we believe God, we're always watching the circumstances around us. When, it, when it's favoring us, we feel like God's about to answer prayers. But when it's against our favor, we feel like God's abandoned us. Friends, the word of God does not need the cooperation of the world. His word stands as truth forever. Joshua chapter 21 verse 45. Not one of all God of the Lord's good promises to Israel failed. Everyone was fulfilled. Now this is talking about a rebellious people. Who had to spend 40 years in the desert because they disobeyed God. Yet the scripture says not one promise. Remain unfulfilled. 
Jeremiah chapter 1, verse 12. The Lord said to me, you have seen correctly. Look at this. For I am watching to see that my word is fulfilled. Ezekiel 12, verse 28. Therefore say to them, this is what the sovereign Lord says. None of my words will be delayed any longer. Whatever I say will be fulfilled, declares the sovereign Lord. Last thought. A test is an opportunity for a life-changing encounter with God. This is an amazing story, an amazing thought for me. Because when you consider this, Abraham was a very wealthy man. Abraham grew up with wealth. Provision was never an issue for Abraham. In fact, at one point in his life, his wealth was so much, the Bible says, his wealth and his nephew's wealth was so much, they had to part ways because the land could not support their wealth. Can you imagine how wealthy that is? Wealth. Provision was never an issue for Abraham. For somebody who is so wealthy, walk out of an encounter with God and says, The Lord is my provider. What happened? What was that all about? See, Abraham got to a place, met an encounter, met a test, which his wealth could not answer. He got to a place where his strength could not answer. And then when he finally found found and encountered God in the midst of his major test, he walked out saying, the Lord is my provider. Jehovah Jireh. Literally meaning God sees to it. God sees to it. He sees ahead. Way ahead, any one of us can see. Think about, think about the, the fall of man. Genesis, when man fell, was the first declaration of a coming of a Savior. Thousands of years later, the Savior or the coming of the Savior begins to unfold before the earth. You think about strategic planning. You think about being in charge. Nobody can be more in charge than God himself. Think about the decisions that went against God. Think about the people that rebelled against God. It didn't change the plan of God. Think about the, God, think about the risk God had to take to use human beings like you and me. Think about the, God using Mary for the coming of Jesus. To tell her that you're, you're, you're born. The, the only proof was a word from a virgin who everybody will doubt. Can you imagine that? Lord, why did you do that? Mary said, the Holy Spirit came upon me. Can you imagine everybody? Holy Spirit. Can you imagine the risk that God took? That people had the freedom to decide to obey or not obey. Can you imagine God, the risk God's taking now? To give us, you and me, the freedom. To obey or not obey. It does not change the plan of God. You talk about the best planner in the world. Today in our world, when we talk about planning, we talk about five years, ten years. When they say 15, 20, that's too long. This is thousands of years. With the freedom given to us. He sees to it. He sees way ahead of everybody else. It makes the most sense to trust somebody who knows your past, your present, and your future. Why trust yourself when you can only see as far as 10 years with all the gadgets and all the the, the things that you can use today? Why trust somebody else when their wealth and their power is limited? Why not put your lives in the hands of somebody who sees way beyond what you can see and is in control of everything? Jehovah Jireh, his provision is not just providing materials or resources for us. The word Jehovah Jireh also means this. It means done. It means it's done. 
when Abraham walked away from that encounter with God, he realized that God doesn't just provide resources. Tapos bahala ka na. Dumiskarte ka na. What he says, what he found out, when God makes a promise, it's done. It is totally done. When Jesus, when God made a promise in the Garden of Eden that a Savior will come, he declared from that point on that sin is done. It's over. Sin will never win. Sin will never be in charge. And when the fulfillment came on the cross of Jesus Christ it, and displayed before the world, sin is totally destroyed. That's why the scripture taunts sin. He says sin, the sting of sin is death. And then the scripture says, where, O oh sin, is, where, O oh death, is your sting? Because it's totally done. Abraham faced his test that his strength could not conquer. Abraham faced a test that his wealth could not provide for. So the only way was faith in the God who sees to it. Faith in our God who gets it done. As we close, I'm just going to ask a few questions for us to think through and pray through. Question is, in the trial or the tests that you face, what do you see? Or question is, who do you see? What do you seek? Or who do you seek? I'm not against people asking for prayers. I do ask for prayers. But so many times as Christians, we're more comfortable and we're more, more confident in seeking for prayers than seeking God. Our faith and our confidence is increased when we know people keep praying for us rather than we see rather than looking for God in the midst of our trials and tests. Minsan as Christians, ang pastime natin nag nagpaparamihan kung sino gaano karami nagpe-pray sa atin. Rather than do we really see God in the midst of our trials and tests? Do we see the hand of God in the midst of the trial and test? Do we see God working something in our hearts, in our circumstances, and those that are around us? It's a time of fasting. We will pray for one another. And I do hope we, we do learn to pray for one another. I do hope there's a joy in us when people ask us to pray for them. There is a place for, to pray for one another. But friends, it's misplaced when our faith and our trust is in the number of people praying for us rather than in trusting in the God that walks with us. Rather, st st uh, rather than believing the word that this amazing Father that we have declared upon us. Who do you see in the midst of your trials and tests? And for our nation, same questions in a sense. Are you overwhelmed by the circumstances in our nation? Are, you, are the circumstances discouraging to you? Or even if they're encouraging to you? The next question is, do you see God's hand in the midst of our nation? When the Marawi crisis broke out, one of my major concerns that the church was part of the fear rather than faith. There were a lot of fear walking around, spreading around uh, social media where Christians were asking, pray, pray, pray. War is about to break. And I'm asking, is this out of fear or is this out of faith? Are we crying out to God and trusting God? Or are we letting our fear cry out and begging and, 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 and trying to get people together? This is a trial and this is a test for our nation. But friends, God is in the midst of this. As a church, I don't know if you, 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 you see this. For, the for, for after a long, long time in our history, we have a chance to minister to these broken people. 
I'm not saying God did this, but I'm saying God's opening an opportunity for the church. This is, this could be the church, defi a defining moment for the church of God. Because in every test, in every trial, God walks with us through it. Again, as we close, the question is, who do you see? Every day of your lives, when you wake up, when you go about your day, who do you see? Do you see God walking with you? Do you see God involved in every moment, every corner, every place in our nation and our world? God is with us. We are never alone. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Bishop. Thank you, very powerful. You know, looking at the, the life of Abraham, you know, despite of all you know, his blunders, the mistakes he made. And yet, God chose to remember him as a man of faith. What a God that we have, that he would always choose to remember us. Okay, in light of the destiny that we have. If you go read the Hebrews 11, you can see that Abraham's there listed in the hall of faith. God chose to remember him as a man of faith. I guess I'd um, like to request everyone to please stand. You know, the Bible says that anything that is not from faith is sin. Even when we pray, I hope we pray in faith, not in fear. We'll give this opportunity to pray. Okay, on your own words. Okay, pray that you'll see God in your situation. In whatever trials that you are encountering right now, pray that you will see the hand of God moving. Okay, I'll give you a few times to, a few moments just to pray and ask God to open your eyes to see Him in the midst of your trials. Okay, you may start praying now in your own words. Father, we thank you that we are not going, Lord God, on this trial by ourselves. You are with us. Lord, we can always trust your word. Or when you said in your word that you'll be with us to the very end of the age, Lord, it gives us confidence that no matter what we are going through, that you are with us. That we can always put our trust in you because you are faithful. Even when there are times we are unfaithful, you remain faithful to us. Because that is who you are. Or we are forever grateful in Jesus' name. Amen. Thank you, Pastor Mark. While listening to Bishop Jure a while ago, I was just trying to imagine what if uh, Abraham did obey God? What if Abraham in the midst of the travel, because uh, offering a son is a pagan practice, what if he doubted God? What if he cannot let go of Isaac? And I just sense that there's a ministry moment here where some of you are still holding on to your Isaacs. Some of you are still holding on to the things that hinders you from really receiving the breakthrough, experiencing God. Some of you are in the middle of a relationship and you think, pag nawala to, guguho ang mundo ko. Some of you are in a relationship that you know 
you shouldn't be there. Some of you are in places. Some of you are doing businesses that you know, if my pastor is here, I can't even invite him inside my office. Some of you, there are things that hindi mo open up to your very own friends and parents. Maybe some of you are into, I don't know, maybe pornography. Some of you are into your eye socks that you cannot let go. And I guess this is a moment God is asking you, will you trust me? The provision is up there. Imagine, it's already waiting. Imagine if they stop on the foot of that mountain, they have missed the provision of God. And God is telling you right now, whatever Isaac you're holding on to, do you trust me? Do you see me? That I am your greatest reward. Can you just, just bow down your heads? If there's anybody here without anybody looking around, you know what I'm talking about. You've been toying with this idea, what if I give up this Isaac? And I believe this is the moment of salvation. This is the moment for you to be released from that idolatry. If that's you, can just raise your hand. You know what I'm talking about. It's time to be released. It's time to let go. It's time that God carries you. Lord, in the name of Jesus, you see these hands, Lord God. The devil has been lying all along. Na pag hindi namin to give up, ano mangyayari sa akin? Pag hindi ko na tinuloy tong business practice, baka malugi yung negosyo ko. Pag give up ko yung relationship na to, baka mawala lahat sa akin. And Lord, it's a lie. Because only in you we can find completion and fulfillment. So in the name of Jesus Christ, you said in your word that you will give us the grace. The grace to say no to ungodliness. And right now, Lord God, shower these people with your grace. To say no. To say enough. To say, Lord, I believe you. I trust you. Provision is on the way. It's waiting. We just have to let go. We just have to give up everything for you. Because apart from you, we are nothing. So Lord God, we declare, we let go. Because we want you. You alone. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. In Jesus' name. Amen, 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 amen.